Hi, my name is Kane Hooper and welcome to part two of the Accounting for Business Owners. In this part, I want to look at the Profit and Loss Report, which is a very simple report and no doubt you know what it's all about. But I want to cover exactly what it shows you, why it's important and why understanding exact certain elements of it can help you determine how effective you are in the management of your business. In part one, I went over the fundamental element of accounting, the core part, when you understand that, the rest of accounting is very, very simple. And I tied that into the balance sheet and what that shows you. So if you want to check that out, go to part one on YouTube and you can learn all about the balance sheet. All right, so last week we were looking at a business in terms of an asset. So in this case, we've got the example of a house. And let's just say the house is worth $500,000. Now that house that's worth $500,000 is usually owned, so to speak, by two different types of people. Firstly, the asset itself is equal to the liability that's owed to the bank. So let's just say $200,000 is owed to the bank for this particular property. You could effectively say that the bank owes owns $200,000 of this particular asset. The other part, or the other owner, of course, is you, and that would be your equity in the property. And in this case, your equity is $300,000. So if you were to sell that house today and pay the liability of $200,000, you should make $300,000. And this equation here is that the asset is equal in value to the total value of the liabilities and the total amount of equity is actually the fundamental equation upon which all of accounting is uh, based and that's known as the accounting equation instead in accounting we don't just look at one asset the house we look at all the assets the cash the accounts receivable the inventory vehicles equipment etc we look at all the liabilities so bills owed bank loans those sorts of things and then we can see at the end the owner's equity which basically tells you if i sell the business today this is how much it is worth to me so very much in a similar way to a house. There's actually no difference. The only complexity is in a, in a business, there's more elements than just the one particular asset. All right, so let's look at a business. We've got a bakery. Tom and Jane own this particular bakery. And of course, they've gone into business ultimately because they want to earn a profit. They want to make money. They want to put money into the business. They want to sell things. And of course, they have expenses, but out of that, they want to make a profit so they can pay themselves so they can live. Now, of course, there's many other reasons to go on business because you love doing it. Uh, you've got a good or service that you think uh, is so valuable to people, you just can't stop yourself. But ultimately, you're going into business to make a profit to fund your particular living expenses. So, of course, when we're looking at a profit and loss, we're looking first at the revenue. So, if the bakery shop sells bread to its customers, customers pay revenue to the bakery shop. On the expenses side, and this is one element to take into account, when we're looking at the expenses of a business, we're specifically looking at the expenses incurred in the earning of the revenue. So we're not in, interested in every, every expense that could ever occur for Tom and Jane, we're only interested in the expenses that they incurred in the making of their revenue from selling bread. So in this case, we're gonna look at things like their supplies. Of course, they've gotta pay money for that. They might have eggs for the bread. They have to pay money for that. Uh, we've got uh, flour and we've got other bills, say for utilities and so forth, of course, which are all expenses incurred in the earning of the revenue. And that's the main definition we look at within a profit and loss report. So the profit and loss report really has three parts. We start with the revenue, which is really how many bread sticks or how much bread did we sell and what was the value of that? Less all the different expenses that we've incurred uh, throughout the particular period, the expenses that were incurred in the earning of that revenue. And then we look at, well, if the revenue was greater than the expenses, in this case, there's more bread sold than expenses, then we should make a profit. Now, here's the thing. So what does the profit and loss show us? Apart from obviously we made a certain amount of money or we made a loss. It really shows you, does management have control of their business? I can look at a profit and loss report and tell within about 30 seconds whether the management is effective, how good they are, and I can predict their future operation of the business just by looking at their profit and loss. 
the more profit that's generated, so the greater the revenue is over the expenses, generally speaking, the greater control that management has over their business. The lower the profit, or once we get into loss, we know that that business is totally out of control, management is not doing their job, and either needs to work out how to do it properly, get trained, or needs to be replaced. When I go into a turnaround, and I look at the profit and loss report, I can tell you whether management should go in 30 seconds or stay. Some people don't like that because they think, well, I need to analyze it more, there's more to look at. But the reality is that report will tell you all about the control in your particular business. So when we're looking at control, you need information. So we've got the bakery, it's an asset. And it's made up of, or it has certain liabilities, and it has certain equity. Now, that when a business makes a profit, it increases the value of the assets, but it also increases the owner's equity. Obviously, with more profit, the business is more valuable. And this is how the profit and loss ties in with the balance sheet, because every time you make profit, your cash goes up, so your assets increase, and your owner's equity goes up, because the business is now more valuable. All right, Tom and Jane. So they get their profit and loss report. And in most businesses, they're gonna get their profit and loss report at the end of the financial year. And that's when they get the information necessarily to analyze their business. In terms of the control, the financial control of the organization. And then from that, it may show that they're making a, a tidy, small little profit. Now they're making that profit when they're receiving their profit and loss only once a year. Uh, very recently, I had the pleasure of talking to a couple of business owners who showed me their profit and loss and their revenue had gone up by uh, $30,000 over the previous year, yet their profit went up by $40,000. That's quite good control. Now, the funny thing is they were able to pull off that with only one financial or one profit and loss at the end of the financial year. Now, if you really want control of your business, and this is really where the profit and loss becomes valuable, is you want to get your profit and loss every week. If you can get your profit and loss report every single week, accurate report, you can then get information to make decisions to have total control of your business. And it's that total control which will drastically increase your profits. So what I want to do with these, uh, these, these owners that I met is I want to give them a profit and loss report every week. The fact that they were able to achieve $40,000 in increased profit with only $30,000 in increased revenue with a weekly profit and loss, wow, I mean, these guys are going to go extremely well. It's this that makes a good accountant, providing information to management so they can make the right decisions to run their business, and that's the value of the profit and loss. Not once a year for the tax office so you can try and minimize your tax owed. Yeah, that's fine, but accountants do only think with taxes and the tax office. And it doesn't necessarily help the manager. And it's in this reason why I think the accounting industry is becoming an antiquated industry. They're living in the dark ages where they think it's okay to provide a profit and loss once a year, which might be six months after the end of the financial year. It's time for the whole industry to come into the 21st century. And we have the technology, we have the applications that can give you the information you need fast. And that's what I'm trying to do with my business cloud accounting partners. So I'm not gonna, I don't wanna get into a pitch here, but if you are interested, by all means, check it out. But I wanna take the accounting industry into the 21st century. All right, so I hope that's been useful. The profit and loss, it's quite an easy report to understand, but what's more important is how regularly you get it so you can further control your business and increase your profits. So in part three, I'm gonna talk about assets and I'm gonna talk about the often misunderstood concept of depreciation which is actually a very easy concept to understand.